Well, if we have some extra time, if the committee's okay, we can go ahead and talk about the simplification since it came under question. Okay. So um, at the January, no, sorry, April board meeting, um, the board of the Fairfield, the Baca Memorial Library actually submitted a letter that had been signed by all of the Fairfield board members. Um, again, requesting that Selco simplify um, procedures. Um, since we knew it was coming, I had Donovan um, include in, or I, we included the sheet that Donovan had and Cheryl had put together for you at the last meeting that talked about some of these cleanup processes and those things that we were doing behind the scenes to help minimize workflow at your library. So that's not, in some respects, it's not the same kind of simplification that maybe Faribo was looking to that there, because their big confusion is or their concern is that book comes from library A and book comes from library B and book comes from library C and they all get checked out to the same patron and they all have different due dates and how do you explain that? Um, but so we we did say that we are have been looking at simplification, trying to streamline workflows, make things easier at the local level. So that's the first thing that we've done. Um, because that was a day that had no less than five big meetings, the Legacy Review Committee, the Advocacy Committee, the Nominating Committee, the Board Meeting, and the Poetry Party, all between 12 and 8 o'clock. Um, we didn't spend a lot of time on the topic, and so it is again on the agenda for the May Executive Committee so that Donovan and Cheryl can maybe spread a little bit more information about what has already been done. Um, I did have a conversation with Mary um, Jane as she was getting ready to leave, because if, if you remember from, from her letter, um, and if you didn't see it, um, it, it admitted that they had looked at the rule of two in Goodhue County and thought it was really neat and then proceeded to simplify just their fine system. And so I encouraged them if they really wanted to look for some simplification, they could start with their own policies first. Um, <laughs> Uh, Mary, Mary Schneider did an, a very eloquent job of talking about things from the Plainview perspective and I think really a perspective from many of your own libraries that um, some things can be simplified and that that would be good, but there are some things that libraries have chosen to do that they really do feel meet their unique operational decisions, their management, and their patrons. And Mary did a really good job of saying, you know, there's just certain things that maybe Plainview didn't want to implement. Um, so we're, Cheryl's trying to work when people, especially when we have new directors, Tyler goes out and visits right away, and then Donovan goes out, and Reagan goes out, and I go out. And so when those visits are happening with new directors, we're really trying to stress the fact that this is a great time with a new director to look at your policy files that you're inheriting, that somebody else, maybe two or three directors before you, made decisions and made decisions when we didn't know how Horizon would work. So we're trying to do it rather gently. Um, and there's been some discussions just on a one-to-one -one basis, um, like I was at the Wabash Hill Public Library Board and they're interested in adopting the rule of two because they want to be able to count CERC consistently with their other funding libraries. I guess my question is, would you please tell me what the rule of two is? Yeah. That will let James explain that. Okay. Thank you. Good, you're counting. Sure. All right. So there's actually several aspects to it, I think, from some libraries don't. They've heard it, but they don't quite understand it. It's, it's circulation. So we do everything in twos. You get two weeks on all items. You get two renewals. Fines are 20 cents. Two day grace period. Thank you. Everything's two or so, Thank you. So it was, now it. we came up, a, a, it was an advertising campaign in a sense because we wanted to standardize the county and so because we had a lot of crossover. And, and good, you have five libraries in that county. So we're different, I think, than most counties. We have a lot, right. and we have a lot of crossover. But aside from the 
standardization of all that amongst the libraries, we also standardized our I-types on the back end. And so that we could share staffing, we could come to each other for resource sharing, and we went through a large process actually and simplified all of our back end policies, got rid of all these exceptions. Our, our whole goal was just simplification, Simple, simplification for the patrons, simplification for librarians, and quite honestly, I think it's been working pretty well. Michelle wasn't around when we implemented it, but I don't know if you can see. I just to updated actually at uh, my board meeting on Tuesday. We basically just stole all of your policies from Zambroda and um, updated everything um, that way too, to because uh, they hadn't been touched that way for a long time. But um, the rule of two has worked out. I have been in Kenny now three years, so it was already in place, and um, it seems to really be kind of straightforward for our patrons, new patrons coming in, they seem to understand it for the most part. So, okay. yeah, I have it on our bookmarks and stuff just so it's right there and all good you county libraries work this way. And so, but then, you know, kind of moving on, it does get a little confusing then when they request something and it doesn't come from a good county library and they're like, well, so everything was two weeks. And it's like, well, that's where it gets a little confusing for patrons. But. I have to say, this is the only, I have lived in seven states. This is the only state I've ever lived in that library books that grace period. Really, which due date was your due date, period. And I find it fascinating. We have one, and, and I, you know, I don't know. Why have a due date? Why don't you just make it something else then? So we are gently trying to move in that direction. I'm trying to be very respectful of the fact that some of these decisions have been made with with knowledge and and actually um, this is the way they want people want to do business. And I'm also trying to get people to sort of look at their policies, look at their um, policy file within Horizon, and look at it from the point of view that maybe they haven't looked at it for years. I mean, why do I call this I type? Why do I have this I type and not that I type? Um, because people made decisions. Well, yeah, I understand that. I think the thing that, you know, to me is kind of hard. So I'm assuming you don't have any different time lengths for your new books or your DVDs, everything. Two weeks on a DVD just seems, you know. If it's got, if it's a normal, if it's a TV series and it's 20 episodes and they're each half an hour long, can you watch them all in one week? You know, I mean. We only have three days. And our, and you know, and everyone has a different view on it. I don't want to argue with you, but I will. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I have my. You know, you can <laughs> you can always return early when you're done. So Zelko's approach has always been that we would not necessarily declare the rule of two the only way, um, but what would be helpful is if there were maybe um, fewer options not only one option, but maybe fewer options so that the staff were managing five different variables rather than, in some cases, the exceptions in some of the parameters on our, on our horizon tables. There's like two or 3,000 exceptions, which of course, every time there's a checkout, the computer has to go out and check all of those exceptions. You know, is this a purple book on a day that ends in why that, you know, and it's raining today. Um, and so if we can try to simplify some of those things, it speeds up processor time. It, it makes it it's simpler for staff at the desk to explain why something's weird. Um, so we're, we're working on simplification. I, I don't think I have, you know, I, my DVDs are not requestable anyway. And, and, so, and, and I we were, we're, that's why we say that we have yeah. some libraries that yeah. feel very strongly in one so way or another. Is, I wouldn't mind the rule of two for everything else. Well, um, and, uh, then you need to talk to Cheryl. Call you tomorrow. Talk to Cheryl. Come on over to the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> the, only thing have, the only thing I want is my DVD is sort of sacred, but the rest of the stuff, you know, I could probably, we could probably come to some consensus on that. I have a really hard time. To moving towards more restriction, okay, and that's what this would be for me. Oh, okay. I'm not going to do that, okay. And, and what do you mean more really, restriction? when you do an interlibrary loan and you get something from me and it's due in four weeks, this is a problem. This is not a problem. <laughs> right. It's usually 
when we get yeah, okay. DVDs are three days or, you know. Well, you're not getting them. Yeah, you're not going to get them for a minute. You don't have to worry about it. <laughs> yeah, we had, we had people that have had, like, what was that one where we had a checkout period of a Caledonian? Yeah. A day? Sorry. A day? A day? Okay, I do, and that makes me liberal. There's there's a couple libraries that use. And you, you do yeah. understand what I'm saying. Yeah, I absolutely and, do. And I also I realize sure that do. they have different resources well, in some cases. And it, but the, the issue is more, oh, yeah, it's due for four weeks, but then when it's overdue, it's 30 cents a day instead of 20 cents a day, and you have no grace period. Whereas my library has grace period, so I'm now paying 60 cents when I really wouldn't have paid anything. No, my I'm library. Looking at the minutia, look at the big picture. But that, but that, but the minutia okay. is the same. I, I, I feel that I am looking at the big picture. Yep. So you have different I'm perspectives. At the bigger picture. Uh, <laughs> my comment. Yes, as, God. As a board member, uh, it sounded as if Faribault was looking or. The drift was coming at another committee. In my mind, these discussions belong with this group and not another committee specifically to address it. That's what I personally am emphasizing. I don't care how it works out. I just don't um, see we need another committee. I have to say, Faribault has gone from just wanting the board to decree this, which I said that isn't that's how we operate. Happened. Yeah, no, that's, a, that's a good way for me to retire in the future. I found that unusual. That they would. Um, I think they're just frustrated at the front desk trying to explain why this book is two weeks and why this book is four weeks and, and you know. It's not like this is something new. No. No. They're just trying to simplify things for their patrons and so I think that there are things yes, they can yes, do. Yes, the great diversity of the world. Absolutely. <laughs> So I, I think that each library has a choice and if you have a library that wants to um, look at their policies, we will look at your policies with you. And we keep plugging away at the B types forever but, and just keep on working at them. I'll just keep bringing you cleanup reports. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and there's progress being made. It's not going to happen overnight. And, I mean, and as we know from the OCLC project, you know, um, this was a mammoth undertaking. I think if anyone had suggested, if anyone had told me five years ago that we would undertake this project, I would have laughed. I would have laughed so hard. I would have had an accident. Um, and, and here we are. I have to say, in the end, it was relatively painless. Yeah, you know, it was. And we, and have, a clean, it was we have a clean so database. No, I mean, you did a great job. We have a clean database. That we feel comfortable that now people can continue to work at in little bits and pieces and it's never going to need to be as big a huge and huge a task as it has been. Well, I mean, one thing nice about the way we are configured is we do have these options of ourselves. You know, we have our own autonomy. We have things, we have decisions that we can make as individuals. And, you know, and I respect other ones too, but I want the point that I could say, well, I don't really want to do that. And somebody could say, well, that's okay, you don't have to. I so simplification will be up again next week okay. on the executive committee agenda, and we're just going to keep plugging away at it within the tone on his philosophical approach that we are a federated region, right. and different opinions are held by those individuals who have been entrusted with their public library. And my concern is the board really won't have any delicate to understand it, but not necessarily. They don't have a vote on it or anything else, right? This Charlie and I shouldn't be making those decisions. I think he Thank agrees you. with me. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I also feel that, you know, Mary Jane is a fully, you know, she's, she's a member of the board and she can bring things to the board because our bylaws allow her to do so. So um, I may not necessarily agree with the fact that the Fairbow board is taking this stand, but she has the right, you know, freedom of speech in the SoCo board meeting. <laughs> I, and I have a question about, I mean, this really concerns me that the fact Faribault has been going on and on about this for quite some time. And they're always talking about their patrons don't understand. Well, part of this, I think, is a communication process that Faribault has to deal with with their patrons. I mean, if you have patrons that don't understand things, you need to work with them and try to get them to understand these things. I don't think you just say, oh, it's just so difficult. I'm just going to go to cell call and I want them to change everything for us. I mean, we deal with patrons who have some difficulty 
also in understanding some of these rules. And, and part of it is we have explained to them that Falco is a federated region. Other libraries have other rules, and we have to follow those. And after they kind of hear that, it's like, okay, you know, I just think we're making a bigger issue out of this than we truly need to. I think you're right. Because the, our patrons understand follows the ownership of the library. They understand that statement. We have it on our website. You know, when you have it in a library loan, you've got to follow the rules of the lending library. You know, and you get a little slip that tells you when it's due. So I think you should be, I think you shouldn't underestimate the fact that you're not hearing from a lot of people. And that it isn't the people who are complaining that you should be worried about. It's the people who aren't saying anything. Because they're the ones that aren't coming to your libraries anymore. They're, they're the ones who are saying, this is too complicated. I can't figure this out. And I agree, some of this is conversation. And I agree with you that you should have autonomy. But I also think you can't underestimate that you've got families with young children, busy people coming to the library. And they've got to keep track of this book is due in three weeks and has a 30 cent day fine, and this one's two weeks. Well, I'm just going to stop this. I don't want to get nickel and dime by my library. I'm going to go to Amazon and stop using the library. Well, I think that's, that's part of what people have to think about. But to me, I think that still, I'm a net lender. So they're coming to me, they're taking my book. And you know, I am sending them out. And to me, if you don't want those extra options, then you can always check out books that are within your own library. You know, you do have that option. They do. But do you really want the people who are using your library to be the handful of people who understand your policies? Or do you really want to serve an entire community? I mean, that's, that's I guess, the philosophical yeah, idea. I'm I not saying don't get to I'm not your seeing, own. I'm not seeing the demand to change. And to me, I was going to call you tomorrow about you were. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to change something. But remember, I'm not, and I have talked to my staff. They may be violently opposed. But um, you know, I, I understand the philosophy of it, but I also understand that each community has its own issue. And, and so where I think that, that what's good about us having this continual discussion is that everybody begins to hear it at a different point. And if we have a library who has never thought to look at their policy file and comes back and talks to Cheryl and gets rid of three three I-types. And we found that when we were doing the cleanup, we had people who had I-types that had like two items attached to it. It's like, you know, let's let's just let's just get rid of some of those things. It's baggage that again is is holdover from two thousand and two when we made decisions based on how we lived in DRA and not how we live in Horizon. So if we can, if this, if the letter from Faribault, whether they had the right to send it or not, or whether they should be doing something differently in Faribault, it, it gets other people thinking. And so if they, for every call that comes to Cheryl saying, well, just what are my eye types and why do I have these and can I simplify them? If it simplifies the workflow within the building, that's 95 to 98% of your service. Interlibrary loan is important, but it's still two to five percent of your CERC. That's it, two percent of your CERC. So let's focus on the ninety-eight percent of your CERC and what we can do to help library staff have a smoother workflow and better <coughs> customer service. So stay tuned, John. You'll hear this all again. Let's make it all four, four, four then. I, I, oh, four, four, four. <laughs> I was, gonna, I, was, I was just thinking, Mary Kay, I hadn't heard you do the 2 2 2 dance in a while. Oh, my God. I don't think we can come up with a 20 cent fine. I think we are going to have to keep the We're not doing it region wide. Hold on. I agree. I agree. I think we would be very easy to get a very easy to get all 30 some libraries to agree on the same parameters. Yeah. I bet not. Right. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> agreeing to similar fines in Fillmore County, except there's one library in Fillmore County that charges no fine. And and You're that's kidding. two now. There's two. two. Oh, two now. And and you know, we've got board members in that case of whether to charge or not charge fines is vehemently a board opinion. So, you know, we 
if we're, we are we are not a consolidated region. I don't want to work in a consolidated region. Been there, done that. We're happy about that. So, so there probably is no harm in people going. So, how do I go about reviewing the policies I set up? I absolutely agree. We had I type, B type, I C S, all those things thrown at us. We're going. But what this OB is based on a five dollar max and eighteen days. Yeah. This OB is based, and I'm going. I mean, that was a lot. And it was fill it out, send it in, and we're going, okay. So I've never. Oh, we don't even know what the problem is. Yeah, and I know we have switched things around going, what? And part of it was doing that with CLC. We're going, this yeah. is what? <laughs> and and I've had staff that are going, why did you do this? And I'm going, what? No. <laughs> so what would be the best way to say, would you like to review your policy? And the staff we had at the time were just as unknown within the horizon world. So we were just truly getting the information from you and coding it. We have very different staff that are in the guts, working with the guts of the system now, that do things different. So also fall down these half so many options, why not use them all? <laughs> oh gee, I can do this, 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 and this now. So, okay. Thank you, Anne. You always ask these questions at a end the meeting, John. He fills up the time available. Let's move on. Are there any announcements? Wait, I worked on this. Are there any announcements? We know you're not going to teach you to. I had sort of pulled a Donovan at the beginning of the meeting and something that I wanted to bring up. Um, it didn't. <laughs> you pulled a shot of it. I'm paying attention now, though. Um, I'm, I'm wondering about the horizon timeout a little bit. I like that you do it. I think that's a great thing. I'm wondering if there's any conversation that could be had about the timeline. <laughs> because at my library, one more hour, so a three-hour timeout would make a world of difference to us. And I'm just wondering, you know, I don't know how you came up with do, but I'm just could there be a conversation about that? I came up, I mean, we picked, we picked two um, when Gina and I discussed it because 9 o'clock is about when the largest libraries open or close. We figure most people are out of there by like 9.30 and day end starts at just before midnight. So we wanted people out of the system before day end kicked off. At 11:55, so that's how the two hours came up. Because so. part part of the problem that we were trying to address was libraries leaving Horizon sessions logged in at the end of the day, which over the years has created a lot of headaches when Dan tries to run system data, database corruption and other systems problems stem from that. And so we decided finally once and for all, rather than just keep fixing the problems when they came up, do something about them. So that's how the two hours came in. Is there any way just to make like Horizon log off at 9:30 at night or something like that instead of having a timeout? Not easily. Uh, Not really. We start the server at 9:30. <laughs> 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 I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> the problem, the problem is, is that while the libraries may be closed, that would be interesting. That's still prime time for people who are using Horizon at home via the enterprise catalog. And so most any measure we could take along those lines would, would take things offline and create a problem with that. Um, so that, that's kind of the issue there. I mean, it's certainly something we can investigate more. Could there but, be some way to just like command out, kill all Citrix sessions right now at this time? We'd have to dig into that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not an issue for us, but I, I did hear one other complaint, and I guess as a representative, I should let you know that Alice is not the only one I've heard that from. And so you need in the session, you're still working after nine? No, it's it's not even that. It's during the work day. So I come in and I boot up my computer and I run my pull list and I'm usually done at 9.30 and then the van shows up at 11.30 so by the time I go to route those items in I have to re-log in. 
And the next time I use that same um, computer is when school gets out. And by the time school gets out, you need to log back in. Yeah. That's, okay. Yeah. And exactly. so one more hour and none of that would ever happen. We, we, we can certainly look at that. I, I, I will say, this is going to sound like I'm arguing with you, and I don't no, mean okay. for it to be that way. The whole time out for, for day end and everything was our biggest concern. But another one that was on the page was we are a little concerned about PCs that are left with Horizon open, long periods of time throughout the day with nobody sitting at them, lots of juicy patron data sitting right there, Presumably you have physical security in your building, so that's not as much of an issue, but it is something we have to think about too. That's definitely not the main factor. I'll be very upfront about that, but it was also on our list of concerns. We, we do get a little worried about Horizon stations just sitting there open with nobody at them for hours and hours on end. Yeah. In, in my case, you know, it's, it's in the back room. Right, right. Yeah, it's sure. It's yeah. Absolutely. But we can certainly look into it more. Thank you. Are there any additions to the agenda? <laughs> <laughs> I think we're done, actually. Yep. I, then we are adjourned. And we'll keep the June meeting on the calendar, see how the agenda looks, and then cancel. <laughs>